the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this third Sunday of Advent, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and, to re and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and the garden makes its growth spring up. So will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. 
Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy. May you entirely spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john a man named john was sent from god he came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him he was not the light but came to testify to the light and this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, making straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, Advent is the season of running. It is the season of running. On the first Sunday of Advent, Jesus told us to be watchful and to be alert, to always be prepared for his coming, especially at the end of time. And we prayed on that first Sunday for the resolve to run forth to meet Christ with righteous deeds at his coming. On the second Sunday of Advent, John the Baptist reminded us that staying awake and being prepared involves repentance, turning away from sin. And on that Sunday, we prayed that no earthly undertaking, nothing, will ever hinder us who have set out, who have run out in haste to meet Christ. In the first part of Advent, we have been running to meet Christ. We have taken a look at our lives and asked ourselves, are we ready to meet him? 
when he comes again. Are we ready for him to confirm in judgment the way that we are living right now? But on this third Sunday of Advent, the tone of our readings and prayers has changed. Today is called Gaudete Sunday, which means rejoice. And why is that? Because today we recognize that while we have been running to meet Christ, at the very same time, he has already been running to meet us. That's the cause of our rejoicing. The Lord draws near. And so in today's gospel, John the Baptist cries out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord. God is doing something new in and through Christ. Get ready for it. Open the way for him so that you can recognize him when he comes and receive the gift of salvation that he brings. This gift, the prophet Isaiah tells us in our first reading, brings with it something radically new, a new era, a new time of deliverance for the disadvantaged for all of us. It is the gift by which God delivers us from slavery to sin and death and transforms us so that we may be incorporated more and more into his divine life. In response to this great gift, we do what St. Paul tells us in our second reading from his letter to the Thessalonians. We rejoice, we pray, and we give thanks, all of which helps us to accept and embrace it. There is a sense of excitement in today's readings that is trying to stir up in us a joyful anticipation that we need to celebrate Christmas to celebrate the remarkable event in history when God became man, became one of us in Christ, so that we might become God and experience a life without pain and suffering, without sickness and death, without evil and sin, a life without end. But maybe as you're watching this from home, you're not feeling it especially if the pandemic is weighing heavily upon you. Maybe you feel that your running days are over, especially if you are sick or homebound. On this third Sunday of Advent, let us all turn to the one who helps us to keep running when we think we can run no more, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And with her, let us cry out, as we did in our responsorial psalm, my soul rejoices in my God for running to meet us in Christ so that we will never stop running to meet him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray and present our petitions to the Lord our God, who knows the needs of our hearts that the Spirit of the Lord may be upon the anointed priests and bishops of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the Lord God may make justice and praise spring up before all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the God of love may give hope to hearts in need of redemption from sin or suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may make straight our way as we await with joyful hope this Advent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of the deceased may rejoice forever in God with Christ their Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you always remember your promise of mercy and do great things for us. Hear the prayers we bring before you today and grant them through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of his name. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.